Well, hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope everybody is having a great day. Today on the channel, we're going to be taking a look at iOS 18.2. So this is a pretty uh, good feature update here for iOS 18. We get a whole lot of additional Apple Intelligent features, and we also get a whole bunch of other bug fixes and just random things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and go over everything new here in this update. So this update is available to quite a few devices, but if you want Apple Intelligent features, you're going to have to have at least an iPhone 15 Pro uh, or Pro Max in order to access those features. So on my 15 Pro Max, this particular update came in at just a little bit over 2 gigabytes. It was 2.05 gigabytes. So let's go over the Apple Intelligent features first here. There are several of them. So let's hop right into the first one and that is Image Playground. So with Image Playground, you have the ability to kind of create your own custom images. So uh, they do, you know, several different ways uh, that you can do this. So first off, you can choose a picture of yourself and that will uh, kind of be like a base. So you can use yourself or any other photos of anybody uh, in order to create that. You can then add different things down here at the bottom. So you can see that we can start off with different themes. So we can kind of choose uh, adventure, birthday, disco, starry night, you know, just random things that might be going on, kind of like settings. You can add different costumes to that. And then you can also add accessories and places and kind of create your own image. So for example, let's say that we want a birthday and then we also want to include a farmer and then we will uh, include some sunglasses and we'll make it also a forest somehow. And now, there you go. We just kind of created this custom uh, image of a tractor there, which is pretty interesting. You can also, like I said, use people. So if you tap down there, you'll see uh, different faces that are recognized from your photo albums, and you can do it like that. You can also go down here, you can take a photo or choose a photo, and you can also choose whether you want it to be more of an illustration look or an animation look. So the illustration is kind of more like a drawing or a picture, and this is more uh, I guess you could say realistic. Now, of course, these are able to be saved and shared. Uh, it kind of has like a little gallery here in this application. If you had done, you can see there it is. You can then save that or you can delete it. Now, all of these are going to be synced across uh, all of your devices, which is pretty nice. And you can also down here at the bottom uh, describe an image so you can type out what you want to create. Now I've been messing around with this quite a bit. Uh, one main thing to note is it's not gonna use like any recognizable brands. So you can't just type in something very, very specific. Like if you wanted a certain model car or something like that. Uh, but it is pretty good at coming up with whatever you type. So uh, just, you know, off the top of my head, frog reading a book. Hit that. See if it actually does that. Yep. Look at that. So it is, uh, <laughs> like I said, it's pretty good at coming up with what you type. And then you can add in, like after you create that image with text, then you can add in like other items. So we could add in like disco. Okay, now that there's a disco background. So, I mean, it's pretty good. Um, you know, let's try another one here. Um, I don't know, sports, car, driving fast maybe I don't know we'll see what that does oh yeah there you go and you can see that's what I was talking about like it's not any specific brand of car it's just kind of like a generic image and I forgot to tell you you could swipe through here and choose like what angle uh, you want right there so yeah pretty cool uh, image playground it's definitely you know something that's just kind of fun and neat to mess around with. Now to go along with Image Playground, we now have the ability to generate emojis, and Apple's calling this Genmoji, what a silly name. But anyways, you can create uh, custom emojis right from the keyboard. So here is an example of that. It says Genmoji. Uh, you can hit continue, 
and then this allows you to kind of create that so in order to access this by the way uh, you just pull up the keyboard and like messages or whatever and there'll be a little icon next to where it says search for an emoji so previously you could do that well now uh, you can hit that little icon and bring up this menu so this basically allows you to type out what you want uh, so again this works very similar to the image playground but this is creating emojis that will be added to your keyboard so you can do just you know pretty much anything uh, let's just say something like uh, I don't know cat reading book or something I guess I'm into reading books I don't know we'll see if it comes up with something here though yeah so there you go there's a cat reading a book uh, but yeah there's just pretty much the possibilities are endless um, here uh, you can be very just kind of plain like just type in house or you can be more specific like a red house or something like that so the possibilities are really uh, endless with this I mean you can create basically whatever you want and really kind of personalize things and as of right now you know this is just something you can have like a good time with and that's pretty much it but it is cool and that's Gemoji for you next thing here in the Apple intelligent feature set is chat GPT so if you go to your settings you go to Apple intelligent and Siri you'll then be able to uh, enable chat GPT so we can go in there and you can use chat GPT up there uh, and the cool thing about this is Apple is letting you do this without uh, an account for chat GPT you don't even have to download the app onto your device you literally just hit use it you see that you have the option to sign in right here uh, so that is a good idea to go ahead and do that um, because then that will save all your chats and everything like it does uh, in the app or on the website and you can use uh, any paid uh, subscription you might have so you can see if you're not signed in you'll notice that you actually have a daily limit on advanced capabilities so it says you'll have access to ChatGPT's advanced capabilities until you reach your daily limit what the daily limit is I'm not quite sure but you can see right now we're actually under uh, our limit there but like I said if you have an account for uh, OpenAI ChatGPT you might as well go ahead and sign into it just kind of integrate it so to show you uh, ChatGPT we'll just go ahead and tell Siri to do something for us find me a recipe for a chocolate cake using ChatGPT and you can see that the first time we're going to do it it says I'll need to use ChatGPT to write that should I go ahead and then you can hit use and if you give it a moment it will uh, retrieve the answer for you and there you go so you can see that that is how you would use the ChatGPT function so that is going to help Siri out a ton because we all know Siri well she can't do much Another cool thing you can do with ChatGPT, like you can in the application, is you can now use it to rewrite. So you can see we're here in the Notes app. If I tap right here, tap on our Apple Intelligence, you can see we now have a new thing right here that says Describe Your Change. So you can basically uh, type in how you want to change this. So we could say something like uh, Rewrite this to make it sound more nice I don't know I'm just trying to uh, come up with something there and you can see that it changes it for us so that's pretty cool another cool thing you can do with chat GPT of course is just completely write something uh, for you so if we go ahead and just kinda we'll just select all this delete it all if you go right here and then you scroll down you can see compose at the bottom and now you can have this right here so you can literally tell ChatGPT what to write for you so let's go ahead and just try something uh, make a list comparing the pros and cons of the iPhone 16 Pro well, we'll just do iPhone 16 and iPhone 16 Pro 
do that give it a second and hopefully there we go and now we have a full list all that right there isn't that pretty cool how you can just write stuff like this so quick so there's iPhone 16 pros and cons and then we have 16 pro pros and cons pretty cool another thing I'll show you just real quick here uh, we're not gonna do it at the moment but you can hit this plus icon and you can add a file or an image so that way you could like take a file and you could say summarize key points from this file or you could take an image to uh, say something like write a poem about this picture or something like that but it is cool to be able to write uh, stuff with ChatGPT I mean you could literally do something like write me a script for a YouTube video about the new features in iOS 18.2 look at this it's pretty funny uh, opening screen exciting graphics with the iOS 18.2 logo and upbeat music playing narrator enthusiastic hey everyone welcome back to your channel name today we're diving into an exciting new features of iOS 18.2 whether you're a tech enthusiast or just curious about how your iPhone can do even more, you're in the right place. And then, yeah, it just gives you all this cool stuff. Now, obviously, this is not um, like for specific iOS 18.2. This is for all of iOS 18 because it's talking about focus modes. It's talking about uh, notification summaries, widgets. Yeah, so it's not perfect yet, but it is, uh, you know, it's trying. It's going to be pretty cool one day, I guess. Last Apple Intelligent feature with ChatGPT is with the camera control. So obviously you have to have one of the latest iPhones for that. But if you have a phone with camera control, a little thing on the side here, uh, you'll have visual intelligence with the camera control to help you instantly learn more about places or interact with things. So basically you just point your phone at an object and you can uh, basically tap uh, to Google search or use ChatGPT. And then also uh, the camera control two-stage shutter lets you lock focus and exposure in the camera when light pressing the camera control. Next thing here we're talking about is some changes to the Apple Mail app. Now this was obviously announced with iOS 18, but now it's finally being implemented and I can't really show you this in my mail app because you'll see all my emails, but we're just gonna take a quick look here on the website, Apple's website here. Basically uh, in the mail app, you now are gonna have categorization. So basically up top at your inbox, you're gonna have different categories. So primary, transaction, updates, and promotions. And that is basically gonna use uh, Apple Intelligence to kind of categorize your mail for you. So if you want, you can just tap on shopping. It'll show you all of your shopping related emails. You can tap on primary, it shows you all your main important emails. And then you can also digest view groups um, from one sender into a single bundle. So that is pretty cool as well. But this basically is gonna allow your mail to be sorted. Don't worry, you can disable this. I've already done it. I'm not really a big fan of this. It helps a little bit, but at the same time, it's still kind of categorizing uh, some things incorrectly. Also, I will tell you a little bug that I've kind of noticed. Uh, my email no longer updates until I open the mail app. I'm not sure if that is just me or something else, but it's really annoying. There's also been improvements to the Photos app, so video viewing improvements include the ability to scrub frame by frame and a setting to turn off auto looping video playback, so you can now disable all that stuff if you want. There's also improvements if you're navigating through collections. Recently viewed and recently shared album history can be cleared, so that's pretty nice. And then favorites, uh, album peers, and utilities collection in addition to pinned collections. In Safari, you now have new background images to customize your start page. You can import and export, uh, which will enable you to export your browsing data however you want to. So you can send it from Safari, or you can import it from another app into Safari. 
So just like you could uh, with browsers all the time, HTTPS priority upgrades URLs to that whenever possible. So a little bit added extra security. And then file download live activity shows the progress of a file download in the dynamic island on your home screen. So you can see that up top here if you're downloading a file from Safari. There are some other random updates and fixes here and there. So voice memo supports layered recording, lets you add vocals over existing song without the need for headphones. So then you can also import it into Logic Pro. So that's pretty nice. Share item location in Find My helps you locate and recover misplaced items by easily and securely sharing your location uh, in the Find My network accessory with your trusted third parties. So this is actually only for airlines at the moment. So if you lose something and you might have left it on a plane, you'll be able to share that information with the airline and they might be able to get your item back for you. Natural language search in Apple Music and Apple TV app has now been added. So you can uh, basically just type in exactly what you're looking for and it'll pop up. You don't have to be very specific anymore like you used to. There's also favorite categories in podcasts and allows you to choose your favorite categories and get relevant shows for you. Also, of course, in this update, they've added support to AirPods Pro 2 for the hearing aid feature. So now you can do the hearing aid test. So now you can do the hearing test on your AirPods Pro 2 in different countries. Uh, you can also um, do that in, you can also now use the hearing aid feature in the United Arab Emirates. The stock app, you do pre-market price quotes to let you track NASDAQ and NYSC tickets prior to the market open. Also, an issue was addressed where recently captured photos did not immediately appear in the photos grid. I was having that problem a little bit, so that's nice to see that that has been fixed. And then also fixed an issue where night mode photos in camera could appear to grade it uh, if captured with long exposures. And that was apparently only happening on 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max. And then of course, it wouldn't be a update without a bunch of security fixes. You can go to Apple's security page and you can take a look at all these, but yeah, quite an extensive list this time around. A lot of WebKit things uh, in here, which is always kind of concerning. And even one with the passwords app, you can see an attacker in a privileged network position may be able to alter network traffic. So kind of crazy when you see some of this stuff, but Apple is always on top of it. They fix stuff as soon as it is found. So that is always nice to see. But yeah, guys, that's everything new here in iOS 18.2. Let me know what feature you like the most in the comments down below. But anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.